I know that this is a hard task. We are all very exhausted. But if you see, we are happy. So I need you to stay with me until the line. You know, there is no, no much to do. There's nothing much to learn. But I think this is a very nice activity to recap everything that we did before. So we will have now the last quiz of the ADVAC. But this is a tough one because you didn't see it during the presentation, in any presentation. So can you read this? Who's the person who told this to the world? Come on, this is the ADVAC. So this is part of the Bible of the ADVAC. Who? Plotkin, yes. So, as you know, you know, Plotkin has been you know, the person who, during a lot, a lot of years, has been advocating uh, about vaccines. So, this is good. Everybody knows this. So, it's fine. You have a vaccine. You have a disease. You have a vaccine. Voila. Everything is perfect. But if you talk to him a little more, let's suppose that if you see him in a, in a lecture and you ask, this is what he's going to tell you. Yes, it's perfect. Vaccine has been, have been amazing. But if you look back, it's really a little quite complicated than you think. So I think this is the very best example of what he was meaning about it, right? We have many, many vaccines. You know, we have artificial intelligence. We have, you know, we, we went to the moon. So, but in 2020, the world was really closed. We had a pandemic as we never thought that we were going to have again. So what happened? Every single vaccinologist was expecting to go to the ADVAC because we needed to know how to face the pandemic. But of course, it was close because everybody was working, trying to develop the vaccine for the pandemic. So what happened? We went to our work and we were working, trying to develop a vaccine. So it's great. So we had a vaccine. So we thought that we we're going to come back in 2020, 2021. And what happened? Didn't happen. It was virtual. So can you see the faces, the disappointment? I mean, there is no one smile in the, so you, can you imagine two weeks of this? No, you can't. So, because it's really hard. So look at my face. I want to kill myself, you know, but it's fine because you learn, you learn a lot. So it's good because in 2022, we were very, very ready to come back. So we came and it was, I mean, we had masks. Everybody was very, you know, aseptic. So perfect. We had one case that was isolated right away. So it was perfect. So what happened? You know, as times goes on, people forget and everything is more flexible. So what happened? Here we are, 2023, nobody with a mask. So this has been the more contagious group ever. So this is four people. They were isolated, isolated two weeks. It was really, really hard. So here it is really what vaccinology looks like. It's not that simple. It's not that simple as having one disease and one vaccine. Okay. So it's a little about prevention and protection. This is one, what this is a word cloud that I made with your words about vaccinology before you started the ADVAC. So, of course, it's about prevention, it's about protection. But I think it's a little more than that. And we saw this during whole two weeks, learning how complex really this is. So, join me. I will try to make a wrap up of everything that we saw, trying to put in context so whenever you are at home, you can review and share, you know, with your teams. So it makes, it makes sense. So please don't fall asleep, please. So we will have some 
kind of a stretch moment moments uh, during the the talk. But you know, I I think it's going to be helpful. I hope so. So we understood and we learned during these two weeks that we really have, but we need better vaccines. We have a need safer vaccines. Also, we need them faster because it's not the as easy as having better and safer vaccines. We need it now. And also, we, you, you can have the best vaccine in the world, but you need to be administered because if not, it's completely, completely useless. And then when you give the vaccine to the people, you need to assess the impact and the safety of that vaccine in the population. So we learned many, many things about this and we need funding. And we know that this is a very regulated process. So here it is, all that we need to know about vaccines. And that's it. So it's not that much, right? So we know that we need better vaccines. So what do we need to do that? First, of course, we need to know the burden of disease. So we need to know exact target population that we are going to go. We need to know and understand the immunology behind the vaccine, B cell, T cell, mucosal immunity. So we need to identify the specific antigen because that's the key of a good vaccine. And of course, if you have the good antigen, you can start to think new vaccine designs and the new technologies, they will help us a lot. And of course, if you need to add an adjuvant or not to your vaccine. So we saw burden of disease, very easy. You need epi studies. You need to know if there is a real need for a vaccine before you even think about it. So if you're going to identify your target population and you're going to go to elderly or to children, you need to know who are they, what they need. So we understood by Janet England that, of course, we can give vaccines to the pregnant woman, right, to protect the mother and the baby. And then we will close this window of vulnerability that there is at that part of, of the life. And if you're going to give a vaccine to a child that is born, so you need to know a lot of things. It's not the same to give a vaccine to a newborn than giving a vaccine to a two-year-old uh, child. So the same is with elderly. I mean, we need to vaccinate elders before they get older. But if you couldn't do that, please, we need to do vaccines for elderly, knowing the immunosenescence, knowing if you need to add adjuvants or what you need to do to protect them best. And the other thing is immunocompromised patients. They not behave, they do not behave as um, immunocompetent ones. So you need to have a vaccine that targets to the diseases for these different groups. So, okay, so we need better vaccines. We can, we need to understand the immunological response. First, of course, you know, the best class ever about immunology. I think that everybody agrees. So we understood something that's very, very important. That is, the germinal center is the key to a successful party. As we did yesterday, we were all close to the bar. So, and that's why we were uh, behaving that funny, right? Because we were just trying to dance and I don't know what it, what it was. So then, so of course you will need to understand the T uh, cell uh, response. And you, of course you have long lived, uh, lived plasma cells that they are part of the body that they are ready to protect you if you are in, uh, in, contact, in contact with a disease. And then we learned a lot about mucosal immunity and there has been new developments towards that that we will see a little later. So again, you know, we always talk about vaccines and we think about B cells and antibodies, but actually, you know, this approach that is CD8 um, dream vaccines, I think is going to be very, very helpful from now on. And as uh, Daniel was showing us in terms of the COVID um, vaccine, which really can help you cover all the variants and it can last a little longer. So this is a new technology that we need to think about it. So if you want to understand how to develop a vaccine, first, you need to understand the disease, how it behaves, which are the antigens that you need to cover, 
So for that, you have this um, way to do it. That is the rational vaccine design process, which is done now to understand and identify the right antigen for your vaccines. So actually, this allowed us to have today many of the vaccines that they are very uh, efficacious and very safe, as, for example, the RSV. RSV is the perfect example of when you identify the target and you identify the protein and the antigen, and then you go, you do the crystallography, and you understand which is the antigen that you need to do a vaccine for, this is perfect. So, and then you, know, you need to take into account that there are a lot a lot of mutations, and you need to be able to identify them to go to do a good vaccine. So, how to how to do a new vaccine, right? So you have an, a lot of new technologies that are striking with the vaccinology world. One, of course, is what he what Barney was explaining during the talk, and I think it was one of the most complete overviews of the real way to do the vaccines. Because there is a history, you know, it's not just one moment in, in, the, in the time. You know, there has been multiple developments that allowed us, when we needed it for the, for, for the pandemic, to develop a vaccine very, very fast. And of course, I mean, this has been the case, luckily for COVID, but also for RSV. We are seeing the first vaccines for RSV now since 1967. So, you can imagine how important are these new technologies in letting us to, to have vaccines, of course, better, safer, and faster. So there are a lot of investment in trying to understand and to have new vaccines. And we had major achievements during the last years. Of course, the first plant-based uh, COVID vaccine. Of course, also, as Christina was saying, the self-replicating mRNA vaccines as well and how the omics and the artificial intelligence will help us in the in the future. So we have a lot of things to think about every time that we want to do a new vaccine. So of course we had uh, we have other vaccines that they are not very new but they are very good and that's why we have we are improving them like the conjugate vaccines will help you not only for the direct effect but also for indirect effects, which it's very important in, in the populations. So for the adjuvants, we have Arnaud that he was explaining very well that please choose a good antigen. Don't use an adjuvant if you don't need to. And the same is for uh, if you are going to give a vaccine to a newborn, you need to understand that you may want to add as well um, an adjuvant. So here we are. We need Better vaccines, but we need safer vaccines. Okay, so I see your faces. Please don't get asleep. So, how to develop safer vaccines? Okay, first we need to develop, we need to assess, and we need to communicate about safety. Okay, because it's not an easy issue. Okay, so how can we assess safety? First, you need to know exactly what is in the vaccines. Okay. That's the main key. And the second very important point, if you are doing clinical trials, for example, you know, in any clinical trial or even when you are doing post-licensure studies, if there is an adverse event, you need to know how to classify and the mechanism of the adverse events so you can really assess the safety of, of those vaccines. So we also know that we have today uh, large linked databases that can really help us not only to identify the signals this, uh, very early on for any safety uh, problem that they may appear, but also they can help you assess causality. So this is great, but we need to learn how to use them better. So we understood that there is a link between vaccines and autoimmune diseases, but you need, you need to assess it very well, okay? And the best example for that is uh, what Kausal was explaining us, about the TTS syndrome, okay? So they did a lot of research on that. And actually it was, it had a direct uh, impact because many of the countries, they are not using this, those vaccines anymore. So 
this is important. You identify a signal and you study, you see the correlation or you see if there is a relationship. And if there is, there is a direct impact on that. And of course, as Philip was saying, it's very important to know that safety is not just developing a vaccine or it's not when you're doing a clinical trial. Safety encompasses all the moments of the vaccine process. And it, this is important from the manufacturing to the post licensure. So take always into account that you have a lot of resources to know how to deal with safety of the vaccines. And of course, you need to advocate and you need to communicate about safety of vaccines. How are we doing? Come on. It's a little, a little more. I know that we are falling, but it's just bear with me a few more moments. Okay, so we need better vaccines, we need safer vaccines, and we want them faster. How do you do to make it faster? Okay, first, endpoint selection. Endpoint, I mean, the size of your trial is the number of endpoints, not the number of people. So that's very important to know. And if you're getting, if you're very lucky enough, you will find the correlate of protection so you can save a lot of time and a lot of money when you do your clinical trials. So we saw phase three studies are all about, Gonzalo can say, logistics. And it's really understanding the population that you are working with. You know, try them as if they could be your, your, your family inside a trial. So this is very, very important. And also there is a new way for many people that you can assess herd immunity even before the vaccine is licensed and are the cluster randomized clinical trials where the unit of randomization is a cluster of people, not one individual. So this is very interesting because you can have a lot of information doing this kind of studies before even the vaccine is licensed. And of course, if you are um, evaluating a vaccine, the very first thing that you need to do is taking care of the people in the trial. So you need to ensure the welfare of your participants. There are a lot of uh, material, a lot of sources where you can, um, you can go and understand. Community engagement is key. We saw when we did the exercise, it's very important to have the community on board. And also, you know, the role of the DSMB is crucial. So we can have an independent view of what, what is the safety of the vaccines. And of course, there is, you know, a human challenge studies world that is kind of, you know, very, uh, um, there are many, how do you say, contradictory ideas, or maybe I'm, I'm inventing a word. Okay, so, but there are many, many places today that they do human challenge studies where you can uh, have a lot of information very early on about the vaccines that you want to you want to develop. Okay, so this is a new chapter. We need better, safer, faster, and we need the vaccine to get to the people. This is tough, tough because I mean, of course, you can have the the best vaccine in the world, but if nobody is receiving it, it's completely useless. So you know, the people that they have been involved in vaccines for many, many, many years. And they were, you know, in the front line developing the vaccines. Now they are concerned because people, they don't want to be vaccinated. So this is like a conundrum, like a paradox, I would say. So we need the, the vaccines to be administered. So we have two main areas. One, it's access and availability of vaccines. So you need to, to the vaccine to be on the country. So how do you do it? You do, of course, the NITAX, that they have a key role on that. Of course, the, the program that you do for implementing new vaccine, how you decide what vaccine are you going to include in your national calendar. Of course, the manufacturing process, the vaccine supplies, logistics, delivery technologies, of course, the preparedness uh, for any pandemic, and the delivery of the vaccines in low, middle and income countries, and all there is equity about that. And of course, you need the people to want to take the vaccine, right? So this is the uptake. You need to communicate. There are a lot of attitudinal research projects, as Noni was explaining very well, to help you to see how can best um, introduce the vaccine in the communities. Vaccine hesitancy is a huge, huge thing. And of course, 
each one of us needs to understand and to learn communication skills. We need to get out from our comfort zone and try to go out and talk to the people. And of course, there are a lot of about um, ethical principles around vaccines. So we will see an overview about how can we have a vaccine in the national calendar. First, you need to understand that there is something new that is the VPDI. It's not just a clinical perspective, but it's a public health perspective. So if you understand that, you will be able to see a 360 of the need of a vaccine. So second, there are a lot of different met methods that you can use today, like extended cost-effectiveness studies where you can show the real impact of a vaccine introduced in your country. So then you need to implement and you need to, to plan a process for implementation. So we had the example of India that it has very interesting because you need to have a criteria to select a vaccine. And of course, you need a process to do it. Okay. Good. So now you have a vaccine. It's implemented. You select it. So how do you do? Mandatory versus voluntary vaccine. It's a, it's a good question and it will depend on every country. Of course, it's prime, prime and boost. You need to select your schedule. Okay. And this is going to be, you know, a major challenge because every country is different as well. So as Edwin was saying, you always need to challenge the current schedules to see if you can have something better. And as Philip was saying also, there is no one, uh, things to take into account but also the social, political, and cultural characteristics of the population will guide you towards the introduction of new vaccines uh, in any country. Of course, the role of the night tax, there are a lot of resources, and it's very, very important. So ethical principles, you need to understand that the most important thing is trust. So there are a lot of resources on that, but this is when you want to introduce a new vaccine into um, into the country. Again, you need to know that it can be manufactured. So there are a lot of innovations in terms of that. So we saw with, with Christina. And also, we learned about the major role of the um, industry for low middle income countries. I mean, for COVID vaccine, they had a huge role in um, administering, in, in delivering vaccines to many, many countries. So this needs to grow all around the world. And of course, the process is very challenging. Manufacturing a vaccine is very challenging. So the quality is something that you need to be sure that you are taking care of. So vaccine delivery, delivery we have a lot of news about that. So we have potential on new mucosal vaccines. We have also um, new uh, ways to deliver a vaccine. So I think that this will evolve very much during the, the, the next uh, the next years. So what about vaccine access? Vaccine access and equity. I mean, we had an amazing talk that Kate was explaining us how we are and what is our goal. So we need, we are the people that is making decisions in every country. So we need to know that we need to work on the equity issue. Gavi, the role of Gavi in trying to make it uh, a little with more justice around the world. There are also a lot of investments and strategies to try to make the vaccine reach every population. Okay, so and we have the vaccine. Vaccine is implemented. You can manufacture it. So everything is perfect. So we need the people to take it, okay? So you have to communicate. You need to know the vaccine hesitancy um, characteristics of your population, and you need to advocate, talk to the people. You know, be uh, a person so they can trust in what you're saying. Okay. And what we learned today is each one of us is a communicator. Okay. This is understood. So if you go to the media, if you talk one by one with a patient, you can make a difference. If you know some tricks and tips, it will help you a lot. So here we are. So... I promise that we are getting into very, very soon. So just, again, stretch a little. Stretch, stretch. No, no, I didn't finish. Guys, come on. No, 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 no. So stretch. Okay. So 
Here we are. So we have better vaccines. We have safer vaccines. We have them faster. We want them to be administered. And the last thing we need to know how to assess the impact and the safety of the vaccine. Okay, so we saw with a very nice um, discussion that we had is that the impact of a vaccine is not just what you're measuring. It can have a very wide impact in terms of herd immunity. And you can also have uh, modeling uh, studies to understand the, the possible impact that a vaccine will have. So again, the PCV is a very it is a, very, a great example on that, how administering the vaccine can really shape you differently, the epidemiology of your country. And maybe we will have, a, with the PCV 20 plus, we will have something that is going to be very, very good and can be the end game for the PCV vaccine. So we learn about, you know, the, the event, the, the uh, impact of the vaccines non-specific events. So this is amazing. I mean, I I guess that this is something that we are not very used to, but they are out there. I mean, you have a lot of vaccines that will have impact besides the vaccine that you are uh, intended them to be. So it's very, very interesting. Okay. So you need the process to be regulated. So we saw a lot about regulation. We had debates. So it's very important. There is a framework Framework, framework, and you need to use it. Okay, funding, well, it's the key, right? Because if you don't even have money, you cannot do anything. So, every company has their own process. Understanding the need and the priorities of every one of the uh, of the projects that they have, and of course, development is very long. So you need to have a, a good, good team of people doing this, and you need to practice. So this is the elevator pitch. So you need to practice on how um, you can you can be funded. So we see it's not just prevention. It's not just protection. It's not this way. So this is what they thought about what is the vaccinology at the end of the course. So I guess that you you captured the idea, right? So it's it's a little more... Complex, it's challenging, it's evolving, but it's very fun and it's really getting much more advanced. So the thing is quite like that. So it's funny. And the important thing is that we made a lot, a lot of achievements in vaccines during the last decades. So a lot, you know, COVID, polio, diphtheria, many, many of vaccine. So this is why, and I think the most important thing is that, and this is for Gonzalo, if you win the race against the disease, you need to do it working with the right team and because we are together. So, and this is the ADVAC, actually. This is what you think about the ADVAC. So because of, because we have these kind of sessions, groups, and uh, courses is that we can have a comprehensive knowledge Get inspired, amazing networks. I mean, of course, it's intense. You know, you can you can see. But the thing is, these kind of places, this this kind of networks is what are what makes the vaccinology to advance. And just for the end, I ask the lecturers to give career-wise advices because I think that you know also besides the lecture, we can learn from the what they really think about it. And if you want to hear what they think, you will see. For example, you know, uh, Dr. Marie was saying, you know, that maintaining the long-term vision and be worldwide and be humble. So this, this was the main key of the talk. And this from Plotkin, I, I find it very interesting because he says, go through the door, don't wait. Take all the opportunities and get lucky. So don't be shy. You know, we, we were talking about at the mentorship meetings. Don't be shy. Go, you know, send an email to somebody that you want to learn about or talk on this class. I mean, the, the worst thing that can happen is them to say no or not even respond. But maybe you got lucky and you get a lot of things from that. So, and this is, I, I find very interesting because when you talk to the people, they just 
think the same. You know, it's about challenging dogma. It's about mentorship. And it's about network. Follow your passion. And this is what makes you really go towards that. And this is the last one. So, and I think it's important. If you talk to the people, what do you really think about how you can improve in your career? See? Network, 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 mentor, network. Okay? So, this must be something. It's not a causality, you know. So, I think that this is what, um, when we ask you what add back added to your skills, this is it. It's knowledge, perspective, but it's network, it's understanding. So use this network. This is what will make vaccine, vaccinology to advance. And of course, we gain some kilos. We had so, some sports. We are gaining new friends. We had a lot of fun. So it was great. But also, you know, we have a new director. So we were, Kamel, it was amazing. This is all the group. And this is all the people that were working. So we can have the best experience ever. So take this with you and share with the rest of the people. Share about the advac so more people can come and, you know, take advantage of this network. It's really amazing.